So this is just a video that's basically meant to go along with an earlier one I did titled Caterpillar D2 and D4 Starting Pinion Operation. In this video I'm just going to cover some of the steps involved in assembling the pinion gear and pinion sleeve to the shaft and ensuring that both components are properly aligned with the latch nut to uh, make sure the system is going to work as it should. Uh, I do still get some questions on these components so I'll just use this drive unit as an example. Um, this pinion drive is out of a 2H series Caterpillar RD6 and although it looks a lot different from what you would find in a D2 or D4 or later series D6, all the components from the gear on out are all the same and the D7 and D8 drive units use the same components as well so it should serve as a pretty good example for all of those models. And in this case I already have the pinion gear on the shaft, the kickout springs are already inside the shaft, I have the kickout plunger rod positioned under the nut, and I have the fold over lock in place under the nut as well. So, like I said earlier, proper alignment of all these pieces is absolutely critical to the uh, correct operation of the system. So, what we'll do is just run the uh, latch nut down until it tightens in against the lock, and at this point, I would even recommend putting a wrench on that nut, fully tighten it in, and you just want to make sure that the shouldered portions of that nut are properly positioned with the shaft and the gear so that when the pinion sleeve is assembled to the gear the spring loaded latches that are in the sleeve will have a good portion of the shouldered surface of that nut to grab onto. That's what keeps the pinion engaged with the ring gear as you're cranking the diesel engine and of course the goal of the assembly is to try and ensure that you get your pinion latches as centered on that nut as you possibly can. It is permissible to run them slightly off to one side or the other. Um, you just don't want to assemble the gear to the shaft in a manner that would cause the pinion latches to pass down by the flat areas of the nut. Uh, they would have nothing to grab onto there and the pinion would not stay engaged. So uh, at that point I would have to take the nut back off and take the gear off position it in a different set of splines and put everything back together and then do another trial run just to make sure that I can then get these pinion latches uh, gripping onto the shouldered portions of that nut. In some rare cases uh, if the correct combination of uh, pinion gear two shaft uh, uh, spline fit cannot be found uh, you'd have to cut a couple shims or maybe even a very thin flat washer to go under the nut and uh, what you're doing there is just increasing the uh, stack height of the components that are under the nut and you're just trying to get this nut to tighten in in a different position in relation to the shaft so that perhaps the correct combination of gear to shaft positioning can be found to get those latches uh, grabbing onto the shoulder portion of the nut uh, as they should be. So once we have everything positioned as it should be and the nut is tight you would then fold over the lock tabs. This is what the lock looks like that's under the nut. There's four tabs on it, two small ones, two big ones. The small tabs are meant to be folded into the recessed splines on the shaft, and of course the larger tabs will get folded up along the flats of the nut. That will keep that assembly tight um, and ensure that it stays where it should uh, for proper operation. So next would be to, the next step would be to assemble the uh, pinion sleeve to the gear, and there's actually two styles of bolts that hold those components together. There's an early style and a late style, so we'll go through that real quick here. This is an early style sleeve bolt. You can tell because there's a hole drilled in the head, and the reason that hole is there is so that when all of the bolts are tightened into the pinion sleeve, you would take a piece of wire, run through the head of this bolt, and bring the same piece of wire across to the bolt right next to it, run it through the head of that bolt, and twist the ends together. And that was just kind of a locking mechanism to ensure that if those sleeve bolts loosened up that they wouldn't totally fly out. Um, that wire lock uh, system did work but Caterpillar eventually replaced it with a fold over lock style retention system and of course this is a used fold over lock. Um, if this is the uh, uh, style that you have on your sleeve you definitely want to find or uh, uh, buy a new fold over uh, locks when you put this thing back together because the more times you uh, bend this metal the weaker it gets the more it fatigues and these locks can still be pretty easily had uh, through Caterpillar or, or aftermarket even so it's totally worth the investment to get new locks. But So what you do is when you're assembling the pinion sleeve to the gear you just place the lock on the sleeve and two bolts go through each lock. Once you get the bolts tightened down you would fold the lock tabs up 
onto a uh, flat side of the uh, head of the bolt and it would keep everything tight and that system did work a lot better than the wire style and one thing I like to do is uh, use lock li Loctite in conjunction with the fold over locks it's just something that gives it a little more grip um, it's worked really well for me I definitely prefer the fold over locks uh, to the wire ones and if you are going to use the fold over lock um, system you would definitely want to use the later style sleeve bolt that's meant to go with the fold over lock the reason I say that is uh, this is the early style bolt here's a later style um, fold over lock style bolt and when you look at the two side by side it's kinda hard to tell but the later fold over lock style bolt is a little bit longer uh, than the earlier one and that doesn't seem like much but the reason the newer bolt is longer is to take into account the added thickness of the fold over lock that's under it and the reason they do that is because the pinion gear is so thin in this area where the threaded uh, where the threaded holes are um, you really want to try and get every available thread that you can uh, in that gear and if you use a later style um, or uh, sorry an earlier style drilled sleeve bolt with a later style fold over lock well the thickness of that lock has just caused you to lose maybe one and a half maybe up to two threads per bolt uh, worth of bites so you definitely want to use the right bolt uh, with the lock um, setup that you have so that pretty much covers uh, everything that has to do with the assembly process um, I have a uh, pinion latch here I took this latch out of a sleeve just to kind of show you uh, some things to watch for as far as wear uh, on the latch I mentioned in the earlier video that latch wear is a pretty uh, critical problem and uh, the reason for that is of course as we discussed earlier when you engage the uh, pinion to the ring gear the latch will come down and it will bite on the shouldered area of that uh, nut and when you're uh, cranking the diesel engine over and the diesel starts to fire of course the pinion shaft speed will increase at which point these latches start to act like flyweights centrifugal force will start pivoting them out and away from the uh, latch nut uh, when centrifugal force becomes sufficient enough to compress the spring that's at the top of the sleeve the latches will lose their bite on that nut and the kick out plunger rod will bring the pinion and pinion gear back out to the end of the shaft uh, thus disengaging them from the ring gear so you really you really need to make sure that the latches are in good condition this is an example of a badly worn latch and you can see the shoulder on the latch is worn at an angle the uh, point on the end is totally gone um, the wear extends all the way across the face uh, of the latch so this is one that's absolutely no good um, it would definitely need to be replaced and you also want to make sure that the uh, bottom edge of this uh, latch nut is in good condition as well because it can wear just the same as these latches can so one other thing to watch for uh, this is kind of an oddball occurrence but I did see it I took both of these latches out of the same pinion sleeve and they are in fact a mismatched uh, set of latches and the reason I know that is because of the number of teeth on each one they both have two teeth um, a match set would have two teeth on one and just a single tooth on the other and that's what actually uh, meshes them together and ensures that they stay centered with each other and travel the same amount with a mismatched set you would have to mesh one on top of the other no matter how or no matter which way you did it they would not be centered with each other and their uh, rates of travel would differ a little bit uh, in relation to the uh, latch nut and it uh, basically creates a condition where one latch is doing a lot more holding than the other one and it just gives you lots of problems and the, the setup really doesn't work very well when that happens so this was kind of a freak deal but it is something that I saw and you also want to make sure that the uh, the spring that's in the top of the pinion sleeve is in good condition you can see of course this spring is the one that goes between the latches here you can see that this spring still has a latch uh, spring adjustment set screw in the end of it that's because this screw has somehow become bound on to the end of the spring it will not come off and sometime in the past someone tried to do a latch spring adjustment and because the screw bound into the spring it twisted the spring on itself it uh, coil bound a couple of the coils and this spring is no longer any good so that's just something else to watch out for um, I think the last thing I got to cover 
is if you ever take one of these pinion drive units out and you see a pinion sleeve that looks like this. Um, we'll just compare it with the adjustable style sleeve. You can see there are a lot of differences between the two. And this is just a very early style pinion sleeve that was used on a lot of the uh, RD series uh, machines. Um, it's non-adjustable. It did work um, to some extent. Definitely not as good as the later adjustable style latch. And you can see there is no spring in the top of this sleeve. The latches are not even geared to one another. Um, the, uh, the way this worked was each one of these latches had a finger that stuck down inside the pinion sleeve and each latch finger just pressed on top of the uh, kickout rod. And that's what uh, uh, gave the latches all of their uh, grip on the uh, kickout nuts. So if you see one of these in a uh, pinion drive unit, that's it's just the early, early style. You don't see many of these around anymore because uh, they were directly replaced with the later style adjustable uh, sleeve. Um, of course, this worked much better. And if you do still have an early style sleeve, it can easily be replaced with a later adjustable style. So, so I think that's about it. I covered everything I want to talk about. Hope I didn't bore you too bad. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.